Christian Bale drives a 2003 Toyota pickup, while Ikea's founder still flew coach after making 50 billion. But let's start with someone worth 300 million who drives a Toyota Prius, Leonardo DiCaprio. In fact, Leo liked his Prius so much he bought another three for his mother, father, and stepmother, not to mention he rathers commercial over private flights believing it's a greener alternative. He's therefore often seen at the airport looking secretive but fairly casual, although he only reaches peak casual when riding his bike through New York City. Now sure, DiCaprio does own four side-by-side -side houses in Hollywood, but when David Dobrik met him there, he described Leo as surprisingly normal. Like he opened the door for us and his dog got out. And so he gets to go chase his dog. <laughs> like, like, and that's where you go, oh my God, it's the guy from the Titanic. Yeah. This is the Wolf of Wall Street, but he's here at his house just chilling. And this even extends to how Leo treats his fans. I went up to him at a restaurant and his security stopped me. I heard him saying, it's okay, let him through. He proceeded to give me an autograph and we talked for like two minutes. Absolutely down to earth and no superiority complex at all. Leo at least tries to live a normal life, but somebody who actually does is Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. When asked how he spends his 320 million, Dave Grohl stated it goes straight into my bank account where it turns all moldy and smelly, given he basically buys nothing. For example, Dave Grohl christened his first credit card with the extravagant purchase of a Benihana dinner, and when asked about cars, he'd state I drive a family car. Not a monster SUV, but a family car that fits five people, adding that his Tesla was impractical and the stupidest thing as he thought it was too fancy. He'd also get rid of his holiday home back in 2017 and now owns only one single Los Angeles property, which he calls a house that's just big enough. He'd add, I don't need even more money, cars, and gold chains. They don't make you happy. And I'd rather be happy than stinking rich, concluding with a statement, I'm not a banker, I'm a musician. Let's make it about the music. Let's not talk about money. Let's just go have a good time. Dave Grohl is the Keanu Reeves of rock and roll, talented and humble, which also describes Christian Bale after adding one more word, frugal. Similar to Dave Grohl, Bale lives in a nice but simple Los Angeles property, although he'd recently announced he was dropping 22 million on 12 separate houses, all of which are going to a foster care charity. When offered a luxury villa on the set of Public Enemies, Christian Bale refused with the director explaining he just wanted an ordinary room. Christian is so modest and unassuming, which is supported by one of Bale's interview statements. Wealth doesn't mean anything to me. If a robber broke into my house, he'd burst into tears, and it wouldn't be worth stealing his car either. That's what he drives around in. 2003 Toyota Tacoma. It's a good car, never breaks. He's like, I, if uh, someone needs me to carry something, I can put it in the back. Christian Bale's truck has become a notable Hollywood talking point. I guess people have this idea of Hollywood stars, they're driving like the, the nicest cars. What are you saying? <laughs> The Tacoma's not the nicest car. It's How a 2006 dare you? Tacoma, right? 2003, thank you oh very much. Oh my god. That's yeah. And secondhand even then. And while he might have been spotted also driving a dusty Porsche, it seems the 2003 Toyota is his go to daily driver. The joke's on everyone else because he's actually driving one of the best vehicles to ever be produced. Bale described his life by stating I do the exact same as I've always done. I don't have an assistant. I don't drive a flashy car. I do everything myself. I go to the super supermarket myself, the hardware store. It's something I would greatly miss because I'd start to feel like a prisoner, which might also explain why Bale has rejected most technology. Co-star Bryce Dallas Howard said he barely has a cell phone. He's not one of those flamboyant actors that need a lot of people helping him. He and his wife don't have a nanny. They live in a one bedroom house. They're very low maintenance, low key real people. But if it's a competition for who can live the cheapest, NBA player Kawhi Leonard might still be the winner. Because despite Despite making 128 million over the last three years, Kawhi still drives a 1997 Chevy Tahoe because it runs and it's paid off. The car, which is proudly nicknamed the Gas Guzzler, sits outside his two bedroom San Diego apartment, although it's at the wing stop just down the street that his frugality really shows. After landing a sponsorship with the company back in 2016, they sent him a coupon booklet for free chicken wings, which he then accidentally lost, apparently leading to a panic attack. 
Park. Wingstop also seems to be Kawhi's go-to place for autographs, but Ed Sheeran's go-to place for anything is the couch in his hometown house. He made $775 million from his 2023 tour, but when asked about his bank, he'd state, I use my Barclays student account. I've not upgraded because I don't spend much money. If I had all my money in one account, I would spend all of it, so I get an allowance. But when asked about how much the allowance was, he'd give a shocking answer. Maybe a grand. I really don't spend much money. I spend most of it on taxis. Hotels certainly weren't a primary expense, as he'd sleep in Courtney Cox's spare room for three months straight, which might have been a mansion in Malibu, although he didn't need such luxury. I do go to LA every now and then, go to wanky restaurants with people, and I th you know, that is a side of my life, but I also live in the place that I grew up with my wife who grew up there. As mentioned, Ed Sheeran married his high school girlfriend and moved back to their English country hometown with only 4,000 people. Here he keeps up normal working hours. I actually got um, the idea from Eminem. He works nine to five, goes in, does the studio, goes home. And when asked about lavish holidays, he'd state, I'm ginger, so we don't really sit on beaches. I can't think of anything less relaxing than sitting getting burnt in the sun. No, I just shut all my doors, turn off my phone and watch lots of DVDs, perhaps best resonating with The Hunger Games, as Jennifer Lawrence is equally normal. Despite being often cited as the most successful actress of her generation, Jennifer Lawrence stated, I'm in bed by 11 p.m. at the latest. I prefer that to hanging around Hollywood parties at night. Fame or being famous has never impressed me, which might also explain why she refused to upgrade her Volkswagen EOS even after finding initial success. She'd eventually splurge on an equally humble Chevy Volt while living in the same Los Angeles townhouse that was bought for less than a million dollars before the fame. She'd state, I was raised to have value for money, to have respect for money even though you have a lot of it, with this respect for money leading to a life of extreme humility. I still look for bargains in the supermarket. Just because you're getting recognized by other people doesn't mean you've become anything special, and according to Ingvar Kamprad, being a billionaire didn't make you special either. By starting the Swedish furniture brand IKEA, Ingvar built a net worth of $53 billion, and in 2004 briefly overtook Bill Gates as the world's richest person. Despite this, Ingvar was known for driving a 1993 Volvo 240, which he drove around his hometown known for having frugal people. It is in the nature of Smarland to be thrifty. If you look at me now, I don't think I'm wearing anything that wasn't bought at a flea market, and Ingvar was even committed to always flying economy. How the hell can I ask people who work for me to travel cheaply if I'm traveling in luxury? It's a question of good leadership. Best to stay in touch with the real world, although he might have been so cheap that the world lost touch with him. Normally, I try to get my hair cut when I'm in a developing country. Last time it was in Vietnam. Ingvar died in 2018 as the world's eighth richest person, and while Mark Zuckerberg isn't popular with everyone, he definitely maintains the legacy of frugal billionaires. He's currently the fourth richest person on earth with 170 billion, but wears the exact same shirt every single day, reducing decision fatigue while making his life simple. Now, like Leonardo DiCaprio, Zuckerberg owns five side-by-side -side Silicon Valley houses, although it's not like they all have tennis courts. The primary residence is nice but fairly normal, and is 10 minutes away from the mega mansions in the nearby suburb of Atherton. Zuckerberg owns an Acura TSX worth 30 grand, a Honda Fit worth 18 grand, a Volkswagen Golf also worth 30 grand, and a Pagani Huero worth, well, 4 million. But for the most part, his checklist is safe, comfortable, and not ostentatious. Tyler Winklevoss called Mark Zuckerberg the poorest rich person I've ever seen in my life, although he perhaps hadn't seen Lil Dicky, who made a whole song about how cheap he was. It was appropriately titled Saving Dat Money, for which he'd make a music video without spending a single dollar. The concept of the video is how can I make the most epic rap video ever for no money? He'd therefore visit mansions, boats, and clubs, trying to convince random people to let him use their stuff, all of which being done while wearing the cheapest clothes possible. He'd state, you hear a lot of rap songs about spending money. I thought, wouldn't it be funny to make a song about saving money because it's ironic, but beyond irony, I genuinely have pride in saving money. I'm a relatively cheap person who, to me, it's not cool to over spend, it's cool to get a great deal. Within the song itself, Dickie admits to using his cousin Greg's Netflix account, getting his hair cut with several months in between, and wearing the same pair of jeans every day, also showing his frustration with how famous music made him. Hey Mark, are you seeing them? <laughs> <laughs> Mark? 
And then, of course, there's Adam Sandler. He favors oversized clothes, untied sneakers, and a fresh from the hamper look. His dress style is so casual, it's basically a meme. This man has more money than he knows what to do with and still gets his drip from Walmart. Love it. He always looks ready for a basketball match because, according to this interview, he loves to turn up and play with random people. I fly in. Try to find a game somewhere, play, get a little sweat. I once played basketball with Sandler during lunch break on Grown Ups. He has an automatic three-pointer and is as down-to-earth as any famous person I've ever met. I can't say enough nice things about the guy. I literally go to any park, I see a game going off, and I go, all right, they, let me let me just walk in. I walk up, a couple people usually go, oh, that's that's... What's his name? And then I go, yeah, yeah. And then I get a five on five going. He isn't scared to photobomb a random wedding, get a standard breakfast at IHOP, or eat a jar of pickles while walking down the street, despite being worth almost half a billion dollars.